Hi everyone. My name My name is Alexander Gladish, and today I will tell you about rapid backend prototyping for a geolocation based mobile game uh, with OpenRST, Redis, and Docker. Oh, come on. Huh? Uh huh. Sorry. I will take you, t tell you about a little bit about the case, uh, about the technology stack in general, and in details about the nuances of the stack. I uh, will tell you about how the game world architecture is laid out. Uh, hopefully I will show you a very brief demo because the time is really short and uh, mention a little bit about the client side and uh, after conclusion maybe we will have a little bit of time for the questions. Otherwise I will be here. Uh, a little bit about me. I am developing software since 20 O2, most of the time in game development and lots of things beyond the game development now as well. Uh, well, uh, I'm a Lua person, Lua programming language. It's my favorite one and uh, we are holding the conference in Moscow this March uh, on Lua. There would be hopefully some topics on the game development, so you're welcome to come here. Uh, what are the games with geolocation? Anyone knows what this is? <laughs> Okay, everyone knows. So th those are the games with geolocation. <laughs> well, uh, and given the success of that game, we decided to try uh, a little something to prototype uh, a number of ideas on the gameplay we had. And uh, well, to figure out what what's fun, what's not, what figure, what works out, what's n what doesn't, and uh, well. Uh, figure out what are the technical limitations of the thing too. And well, as a result, in less than two calendar months and about 100 hours, we have a playable prototype, for the, mostly for the server side technology, but with a small client. And uh, it's enough to get us rapidly iterating on the uh, gameplay. Well, what this talk, talk is about? This talk is about technological side, not the game design, not monetization, not, not something like that. So uh, some of the examples will be silly from the gameplay standpoint. I'm talking about technology. Uh, and well, right now it's easier than ever, I believe, to develop the geolocation based games. And I believe that uh, there's quite a lot of space for creativity there, quite a lot of space for doing new, no, new things, not to repeat the uh, other major brands, but just to have fun. Since it's so easy, it's easy to have fun here as a developer too, not only as a player. And well, uh, here's a gameplay for the prototype. It's quite simple really. The player with his phone in his head hand, sorry, uh, <laughs> walks around uh, and uh, he searches for mobs, uh, monsters that is, uh, which are placed on the map. If a uh, player finds a monster, he will, can try to collect it. There's a ch certain chance that the monster will escape. Otherwise, uh, well, uh, a statistics counter gets increased in player's profile, monster vanishes, and uh, then it responds after a certain time. And basically that's it. Other than that admin users may add new mobs on the map, new spawn points. For the initial prototype, that's quite enough. You have to start small, uh, but uh, so small that not, not so small that you don't lay down the foundation for the next uh, f new features. So start small but generic. Uh, the stack we choose is something we uh, used earlier on other projects. Uh, it's something we are familiar with. You can choose, of course, something else, but I'm I'm talking about the, what we did. It's Redis the, as the data, database, OpenResty as a web server and application server, uh, Docker as a thing to hold it all together. And that's for server 
And for client, there are, that's a single page web application in the browser with HTML5 uh, implementation of, of the client code. Uh, well, uh, why Redis? For us, it's a reliable, proven solution, which uh, luckily supports get positioning out of the box here to uh, commands for, for the Redis related to that. You can Google them up. And uh, uh, Redis as well has a nice set of primitives to store the game object data. And well, since we are coding in Lua our application uh, on the server side, it comes, on, it comes as a nice bonus that uh, Redis has uh, stored procedures in Lua. Never used them actually for this project, but uh, the, a few pla places uh, they can be useful. And why Open Resty? Open Resty, what, what it is for, uh, first? Uh, Open Resty is an Nginx. Uh, web server distributive, not, uh, which supports out of the box Lua, Redis, and many other useful things. And Lua there is, uh, you have an option to install plain Lua, but uh, for the fastest performance, not that it's needed for the prototype, of course, but still, uh, you can use Lua JIT, which is much faster. Uh, and well, so, Open REST is something very fast, quite friendly, at least to me, uh, and well maintained. There are some large uh, corporations be behind it. Uh, let me move the cursor though, sorry. And it's useful as for quick prototyping as well as uh, for the production environment. We use it on production on other projects as already and as we use Redis too. And the Docker is a good thing uh, for us because uh, usually then you have a complicated ecosystem on the server side. It's a pain to set it up for each single developer. Okay, for a prototype there may be single one developer, but then you have to deploy it somewhere and let's do the same thing again. With Docker we, you have a reproducible environment which uh, you just write once the Docker file, and after this, uh, you can uh, set up the Docker containers you need uh, just uh, with a few commands. But um, the problem with Docker for us is that, okay, it's really good for developers. You don't have to teach every single developer to set, it, set your project up. But uh, it is, arguable if it is suitable for production. Because there are certain performance problems, uh, certain uh, reliability problems, which can arise uh, still, unfortunately, on uh, the uh, higher loads, so to say. But that's a prototype that doesn't matter. So you can set up Docker environment on your server really quickly for the prototype and then decide what to do with it. Uh, one point though, Docker usually is outdated on uh, Linuxes, at, at least on Ubuntu, N not to say about Linuxes in general. So you have to update it to sufficiently recent version. I, know, I don't know, maybe it's changed with the last Ubuntu <coughs> release, I haven't seen it. Uh, so, and the browser. Well, uh, it's for this project we are prototyping the server side first. So the client doesn't matter much, but still the game has to be playable. You can, of course, as a developer, send CURL queries from the command line, but it's not fun. And it's hard to do from the mobile phone while you're walking around and playing the game. So um, some client has to be there. And uh, well, you have to have a map, you have to have a list of game objects. But uh, if you rem remember this original title we're talking about the, in, in the first place, uh, there's certain uh, kind of combat there. You can imagine this in your head. In general, uh, don't implement anything. You can imagine uh, at least first, at first. So, uh, y and you, you are sure you can uh, implement later. For us, it's not a problem to 
well do this kind of thing, not tied to geolocation. And uh, the geolocation is the main topic here. So we skipped the battles, uh, we skipped out the frills, and the client is pretty basic. And well, uh, another problem here is that geolocation data, data access is rather limited on the browser, but it's okay uh, for our purposes. And well, mm, well, I will skip some of the slides, you can uh, read them later, uh, given that we have little time. Uh, so, on the developer machine, uh, Docker is quite simple. The cl client, which is browser, connects to the local host port, uh, and there those two square boxes uh, sit in Docker, open RESTI, serves the HTTP request, and talks to Redis, which it, it resides in another Docker container. Here's a configuration for the Redis. It almost works uh, out of the box. I'm not, I will not read it uh, to save the time. Here's a configuration for Nginx, the interesting parts. Basically, you serve the statics, the static here, uh, from the index, and uh, you serve the uh, REST-like uh, API for your, um, for your application at another URL, and well, that's it. One thing to note here, though, is to, you have to disable the lower code caching for fast reloading. So you change the code on your computer, and it's, uh, it's there on the server. It drops the performance a bit, but you don't care, that's a prototype. And here's a Docker file for the open rest. Basically, it's co just copies on your, all your code there and uh, launches it. Uh, one little trick. So the Docker, uh, so the open rest sees uh, another Docker containers. You have to tell it. Uh, you have to uh, tell it that the DNS server from the uh, Docker resides uh, right here. So you have, you have to adjust resolver's conf. Uh, anyway, uh, how the API works. Uh, there are only three player calls to get the game wall state, to get the specific game object state. It's a bit redundant because uh, the objects are here as well. And to uh, call the game object action. And there's a few system calls to create a new player, to reset everything to the factory state. It's often needed when you're prototyping. And to upgrade the database, that's B, uh, to the current version. So uh, if you just deployed your code, uh, a new version and have to change the data. And we are not implementing any kind of uh, back office UI to save, the, to save the effort. But we're using the in-game mechanics uh, for in-game, well, game management. So certain users can be made admin and through game a a actions, sorry, uh, they can change the world if they, they have uh, the proper permissions. How much time do, do I have? Minutes. Seven minutes, good. Uh, game object. Well, uh, for, for server, game world consists of game objects and game objects only. A game object has uh, numeric characteristics and a list of actions. Uh, it may have coordinates, and uh, if it doesn't, it's either a prototype for another game object, or it, it's inside another game object, like, like an item in inventory. And uh, the prototypes uh, are there to save your work on the uh, setting up the objects in the same way each time. So it basically, prototypes, uh, object inherits uh, its properties and actions from its pro prototypes. And a prototype can have a prototype as well. So that's uh, like inheritance in programming. Uh, characteristics. Well, this slide talks about how they derive from the prototype, doesn't matter. Uh, game object actions as well. So here's, a, here's an object. It's a green toad monster. Uh, well, here it is, the toad itself. It has a UUID, uh, unique ID, sorry. Uh, it has a position, and um, it has a reference to a prototype. Here's its prototype, which is uh, 
specific prototype for this kind of monster, monster sets, uh, escape chains for it. And uh, here's a, it has a prototype in itself, and that prototype, uh, well, it's, it sets the resp respawn time. And here's the implementation of an action that catches a mob. We'll skip it. Um, one interesting thing in Redis that you can, using uh, the uh, sorted ranges, you can implement the delayed action execution. You don't ha need any kind of cron. You just on each query to your server check uh, if there are any actions to be executed by this time and execute them. You in production, you will have to limit this by the number of actions to execute right now, but for the prototype, it works. And uh, here's player. Here's an in interesting item. It makes a pl uh, anyone who wears it administrator. It grants uh, user admin rights. Uh, here's how we give the admin help the player. And well, uh, here's how the stored inventory items work is how the uh, objects attached to another object work. Sorry for skipping this, not, no time. <laughs> Here's a spawn, spawn point uh, for a mob. Well, what else? A demo. Let me show you the demo quickly. Uh, as I said, it's quite basic. You can open it yourself and play a little bit on the, on the mobile phone. Don't forget to change the user ID, otherwise you will be jumping around. As you see, no authorization. It doesn't matter because it's a prototype. Only people who know it play it. And uh, there will be a link later in, in slides. As you can see, there's a map. Here's a green toad and uh, uh, me underneath it. And here's uh, another green thought I placed yesterday. There's me. I have an admin hat. I removed it. Let, let's, let's don it, if the internet works. Um, ah, no, no problem. And uh, there's a, a green thought. Uh, its name is Bradley Perry. The names are r randomly generated by a JavaScript library based on this as a seed. It's very useful because this seed you, you can't remember it. And here's another user nearby. Anyway, uh, what else? Here's how the client worked. Not, not interesting. Uh, <laughs> you, you will read the slide. No, no problem. Here's a trick how to launch the Google Maps. Uh, I found that all the examples in the internet lack uh, one line on a, or another. So I have to compile it together. And well, the problems. The problem here is the uh, noisy geoposition data from client and extremely low precision of geolocation in buildings. But there's no other problems. Actually, that's technical limitations you have to adjust your gameplay for. Well, what's missing? The event system is sorely missing. It has to be added to the engine. And lots of small functions like pedometer, the number of steps you take and the meters you walked, so you ca can tie some gameplay mechanics to it. Uh, well, uh, that's a prototype. After you're done with the prototype, after you understand how it should work, throw everything away. Well, it doesn't work. But uh, OK, uh, at least start over and thoughtfully move parts, good parts of the code there, not just reuse and hack around. Because in the end, close to release, it would not work at all. And uh, um, thank you. That's it. Sorry for skip slides. <laughs> Do we have a moment for questions? Yes, you have five minutes. Oh, good. Uh, anyone? <laughs> Please? Uh, system works with uh, coordinates, but uh, can we imagine, uh, for instance, uh, could you detect if I am uh, in the city, in the forest, or uh, in the sea? Uh, depending on uh, what that, ah, sorry. Can you uh, figure out uh, beyond the coordinates if I am in the city, the player, in the sea? or somewhere else. But uh, yes, you can. But you have to get the uh, uh, coordinates to the zone data somewhere. There's open street, street map project, which I believe does something like this. So if you will tie this to, to this, that, wo that will work. Please. Um, so there was three parts in Redis Docker. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what the third part is for. 
And I'm sorry? The technology you mentioned here is Redis, Docker, and something else. Open Redis. The three parts uh, of technologies here. Uh, Redis, Docker, and Open REST. Open REST is there the application code is, the, uh, the code in Lua that defines your server side game logic. Next question, please. No questions? Yes? So is this a game you're, you're trying to, is the, the, the goal of the prototype is to experiment with the technologies, or you're trying to, are you going to make an open source game that um, you're going to release afterwards, or what is the goal? What's the goal of the prototype, yeah. the question? Um, well, for us the, the goal of the prototype is to uh, understand how the games, uh, the geolocation games work. We have uh, like a list of ideas for s several pages, which uh, try this, try this, try this stuff, and without something easy with which we can rapidly iterate. We cannot try this, those ideas, of course. Uh, the technology is second. Uh, and uh, that's important only because uh, you have to filter those ideas by the technology limitations, but that's it. Uh, the, this, uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have the URL on my, sl or, or do I? I probably called out the, come on, uh, that's a pity. Everyone write down this <laughs> URL, <laughs> geo.logiceditor.com. Uh, if you want sources uh, or talk slides, they, they are there. Uh, I will publish the English language talk slides there uh, today. And, uh, and the game there as well, it's available for everyone to play. So it's a little small open source game. Uh, patches and contributions are welcome, I will publish them as well. Well, so um, another question, are yeah. we done? No, we have time. I think there's a question. Yes? So you mentioned it's not really secure in terms of authentication, but... No authentication at all. You, we trust that you are <laughs> <laughs> the one you... Yeah. Like, may I ask what would be a good start for, for implementing this? Can you do anything out the box with Redis or...? Uh, it depends on the platform. Ah, sorry. How to do the authentication properly in this game? It, de it depends on the, pro on the platform you're targeting. Because uh, users don't like to type in passwords. Uh, you have to tie into Facebook or Go Google Plus, Plus, sorry, or whatever. So you b basically, you, the proper client would not be uh, just a page in a browser. It will, will, will be an application. It can, can, can stay in HTML, no problem, if the technology suits you. But uh, you will have some framework. And you will tie the authentic authentication from this framework to this game. If you wor worry about this prototype being secure, just add basic auth there, uh, add your Nginx config, and that's it. Well, and serve it on HTTPS, as I did, because the uh, Chrome limits uh, the geolocation da data on plain HTTP. Another question, please. Yes, please. How can you be sure that the coordinates, the, the clients and you are correct? It doesn't matter. How do, can you be sure that the coordinates clients send you are correct? It do, like I said, it doesn't matter much because, uh, well, uh, it will be probably a problem for the final game, but then you will have the uh, proper application. There you, uh, it would be harder to hack. Right, right here, it's easy to hack, but you just trying it out. So uh, if you worried about hacking this, uh, it, first the people have to start to care about your game enough to hack it. <laughs> and uh, as long as you don't pay money to people who come to a certain place, you, you can, can forget about this uh, until release, or until better at least. Well, that's probably it. Thank you so much. Thank you.